Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, July 3rd. Okay, so we have the moon in Gemini energy all day. This is kind of piquing our curiosity. It's really pressurizing the mental plane to intellectualize and understand our current emotional disposition. So we are rapidly trying to adopt new perspectives and understandings and make sense of a lot of the things that technically speaking aren't meant to be made sense of, especially where karmic chapters are closing, where just, you know, random unexpected events are popping off in order to push us away from the path that we thought we'd be walking and pushing us closer to the path that we need to be walking. A lot of things aren't going to make sense, but that Gemini energy, again, ruling over the mental plane, very much tapping into the intellectual part of our brain is going to try to make sense of things that again, we may never truly understand. With all of that being said, of course, we just had Neptune go retrograde. We just had Mercury shift into Leo energy. And so there is this kind of adjustment period that we're still very much in. We have to adjust to these particular energies. It's going to take a couple of days to do so. And again, this has all been divinely scripted to kind of open us up to understand new paths, new options, new opportunities that are going to become a little bit more illuminated as we get closer to that new moon in Cancer on the 5th. Again, I'm going to take this opportunity to encourage you to listen to the July energy forecast, to download your Zodiac forecast, to get the Cancer Season e-guide downloaded so that you can stay in alignment with these particular energies. There's a lot going on. It's better to roll than to be dragged. And all of those resources are out there to help and assist you through these very bumpy times. So today we have 11 different aspects taking place here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Gemini energy going to get off to a little bit of a bumpy start with a semi square, creating a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. So of course, this is just us kind of taking a good look at who it is that we currently are. Of course, the old version of self slowly but surely kind of falling away. The new version of self doesn't feel as safe and secure and familiar as we would prefer at this particular juncture. And so again, with the moon in Gemini, we're rapidly trying to process and make sense of a lot of things. And right now, we're kind of focused on our issues, our problems, where it is that we are still feeling a little bit uh, discombobulated from from recent events. And this is very much a time where we're going to be more focused on our wounds, more focused on the pain and the trauma, more focused on our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities than anything else. Now we're not going to sit in that for too long. The moon in Gemini going to come up to bump into team up with conjunct Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, wisdom in this Gemini energy. So first of all, a conjunction is just as much an ending as a beginning. So the ending that we are essentially trying to come to a certain point of acceptance with is the fact that the path that we thought we would be walking at this particular point in the calendar has basically fallen off, fallen away, fallen apart. Now, Jupiter wants us to push the boundaries of our mental plane. That's what Jupiter and Gemini is all about. We need to open up our mind. We need to open up to new options and opportunities for growth, for evolvement, for us to pursue a new path. The moon kind of interacting with Jupiter is kind of putting us in a more optimistic, more confident disposition. We are actually rising to the challenge that we are currently being presented with, which is to get out of our own damn way. So this is definitely going to put a pep back in our step. But here's the thing. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who happens to rule over the Gemini energy that the moon is in and who happens to have rulership over Wednesdays. Mercury just moved into Leo energy. Again, I'm going to recommend that you take a listen to that particular energy forecast so that you understand what the next couple of weeks are going to be about. But just as we have Mercury move into this Leo energy, of course, what's sitting across the street? Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. So there's an opposition taking place, meaning Mercury sitting on one side of the table, Pluto sitting on the other. 
Now, this isn't going to feel good. It's not supposed to. There's a little bit of a confrontation taking place within us. The Plutonian energy being retrograde in Aquarius is trying to highlight the power struggles, trying to highlight the different parts of us fighting for power, fighting for leadership within us. Again, very much the old version of self versus the new version of self, the inner realm versus the outer realm, the heart and the head. There's a whole whole battlefield of conflict going on within us at this particular point in time. So we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, and Pluto, who likes to kind of unearth hidden truths, unearth hidden details, if you will, that are going to have a major impact on our psyche. Now, Pluto does a deep dive in our psyche, while Mercury, on the other hand, stays in the shallow end, the lower level of our intellect. So first of all, we're going to probably be a little bit fixated, a little bit even, let's call it semi-obsessed with a particular topic, with a particular theme. Now, it's going to add a lot of pressure to the head space, a lot of pressure to the heart space, because of course, Leo energy that Mercury's now in is attempting to get our heart and head on the same page. There's going to be a lot of mental tension. We're going to be focused on the problems. We're going to be focused on the issues. This could definitely put us in a paranoid way of thinking. We could be semi-suspicious of other people at this time. We're kind of digging. We got that detective hat on. We're really trying to hash things out. We're really trying to understand certain situations and circumstances. We feel the need to talk about it or to question, you know, other people, question ourselves, question the universe. We feel like we don't have all the information that we need to have in order to make an informed decision or at least reach a certain point of acceptance. So now the power struggle within us is very, very real. We definitely are trying to bring ourselves closer to understanding what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire, what we do have available to us at this time. However, we're just kind of frustrated. We're very discontent. We're very unhappy with the way that things kind of fell apart, the way that things currently are. We're struggling because we're lacking patience on waiting the clarity that, of course, we want to have that we're not going to have until post new moon in Cancer. We're just us running out of patience. We want answers. We want to feel good about ourselves. We want to feel good about the circumstances that we're moving away from. And we also want to gain a little bit of clarity on what it is that we're moving closer to. So that's probably going to set the day off to not the greatest type of tone, not the greatest vibe, if you will. However, we do have some beautiful things happening later on in the day that are definitely going to make up for this tension filled confusion to kick the day off. So shortly thereafter, we're going to have the moon in Gemini sextile, beautiful interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. Again, the North Node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us on our, let's call it solo quest or adventure to meet ourselves in a different form. Basically, we need to be independent. We need to stand on our own two feet. We really need to get to know thyself. And if we're still investing or too connected or attached or intertwined with other people, with codependent relationships, we're never really going to truly know what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire for our own damn selves. So this particular interaction, because it's a sextile, things are working in our favor. We are starting to see different paths, different directions and options open up for us. Again, the Gemini energy going to constantly have us kind of bouncing from one extreme to the next, debating the pros and cons about the options, about the variables that we currently are aware of. And this particular interaction is showing us where we actually do have an opportunity to take a step forward in a new path, in a new direction, where it is going to promote health and wellness and healing, supporting and encouraging us to do what we need to be doing for ourselves. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune, who is freshly retrograde in this Pisces energy. Again, I'm going to recommend that you take a listen to that astral forecast so that you know what we're dealing with for the rest of the year. Neptune, again, retrograde and Pisces energy is really doing a number 
putting us in a situation to kind of learn about ourselves in a totally different way. Yes, we're going to have to deal with the harshness, the truth of the realm and reality in which we're currently dealing with. But we do need to kind of get that particular chapter over with so that we can identify very clearly and confidently what it is that we actively want to do and pursue from here. So there's a lot of spiritual tough love life lessons coming at us from now until the end of the year. But this particular interaction is going to be amazing for creative solutions, for us tapping into a new level of imagination to grasp a vision, a goal, a dream on what it is that we want to do, what we want to pursue from here. There's like this renewal, this refreshment, if you will, in our mental plane, in our heart, in our soul, in our spirit. We are actively, again, trying to process the past because we are still in cancer season, but we are actively trying to piece together what we could do differently in moving on, moving forward in a new path, in a new direction. We have the moon in Gemini making a very positive interaction with the sun in cancer energy. So anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there's going to be an emotional awareness. There's going to be an aha moment, an epiphany on what we want, what we need, what we desire, what we're being called to do and pursue. There's going to be some sort of shift in our inner realm where we're realizing, yep, that's for me. That's what I need to do right now for myself in the present moment and for my future self as well. Now, again, the sun in cancer energy is still in the early degree. So we're still fixated on the past until we reach that new moon in cancer on the fifth. That is when we are going to pivot, when we're going to anchor into the present and start actively building new foundations and structures and nurturing ourselves, our soul, our spirit back to a place of health and wellness by concentrating on what it is that we can build and create and bring to life for our futures. Right now, we're still immersed in the past. We're having some good perspectives emerge, some understandings actually pop off. Again, putting us in a situation to identify what it is that we don't want, what we no longer want to experience, what we've been lacking, and from that, create a framework on what we want instead, what we need to be doing for ourselves instead, and how we need to be building ourselves up. Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy, going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict because we are at a growth point here with the North Node in Aries energy. So this is probably going to put us in a little bit of a funk. Um, we're going to tap more into confusion than clarity. We are going to, I'm going to say, resist making the changes that we know that we need to make. We're also going to resist thinking about the changes that we know we need to make because we're not ready to make them right now. Now, a lot of this is going to be a shock to the system. A lot of this is going to be an unexpected funk that takes over, mostly because, again, we did realize earlier in the day what we need to be doing, what we need to be kind of building for our futuristic realm, for our futuristic selves, but we're not well equipped or well prepared to do that right now. We're more in the ending and closer phase than we are building the new. Again, that will change with the new moon and cancer. But this particular energy is kind of making it a little bit kerfuffled, a little bit foggy, a little bit confusing on how it is that we would even make the first move to break away from our current circumstance and actually try something new. So there is a little bit of resistance. There's a little bit of frustration. There's a little bit of rebellion. We're almost sick of ourselves from being so attached, so stuck in the past. The moon is then going to make a very awkward interaction with Pluto. So this, again, is a major change in the right kind of direction compared to the Plutonian energy that we kind of kick the day off in. The moon and Pluto are coming together in order to make a major change to our mood, to our attitude, to our emotional disposition, likely because we have a little bit more information, a little bit more, I'm going to say, detail on what it is that we want to build, what we want to create. We may not be ready to do it, but we have a little bit more insight than we had earlier on in the day. So this is going to definitely intensify our thoughts and our emotions, but put us in a more, let's call it, powerful placement over our thoughts, over our emotions, especially in comparison to earlier on in the day. The moon is then going to semi-square, again, creating tension and conflict with Mercury. Mercury rules over the Gemini energy that the moon is in. Mercury is in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in Leo energy. Again, we're still kind of adjusting to this particular energy. The moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space, and we're not on the same page at all. Why? Because emotionally speaking, the Gemini energy has us divided. 
divided between two extreme choice points, paths, directions. Now, Mercury being in this Leo energy is bold and brave and courageous, is really percolating some big, new, grand ideas, but we're just not mentally or emotionally prepared to think about the future in that way. Again, we're in cancer season until we get to that 15th degree. We do not want to think about the future. We want to think about accepting the terms of the past. So our heart and head not on the same page. This is going to illuminate what our heart wants us to do versus what our head thinks we should do. And they're going in two totally different opposite directions. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. Mars is in Taurus energy, the low, slow, steady pace and building our self-worth, self-confidence up. We need to cultivate the inner fire, the inner flame before we're going to take action and make any kind of moves. Yes, we need to kind of get down to the bare basics of what it is that we want, we need, we desire, what we need to do, what we need to pursue. But there's not a whole lot of option and opportunity in our physical realms to make the kind of changes that emotionally and mentally speaking, we're ready to make. We're not gifted with that particular opportunity for growth as of right now. The moon and Mars kind of working together, again, getting the wheels turning, getting us focused on exciting ideas, on the prospects to come, on what we could be excited to inspired to pursue from here. This is a building up of the fire, the spark, the flame that we've been cultivating within us. We're going to need to be operating at our most passionate selves when we are gifted with the green light go ahead to take action and make moves in the physical realm because we know we are going to bump into challenges and obstacles right out of the gate. So we have to build our inner realm up so that we're able to, again, keep pushing through these challenges and obstacles and not let these challenges and blockages actually prevent us from where it is that we want to go. The last thing that we have going on here today is a tough one. It's the moon getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in this Pisces energy. So first of all, there's a little bit of a negative narrative that takes over when Mr. Saturn is being aspected in not the nicest way. We also have to understand that Saturn brings a little bit of a harsh reality check in order for us to kind of get out of our own damn way. Emotionally speaking, again, we're flip-flopping in this Gemini energy. Should I stay? Should I go? Should I pursue this? Should I put this behind me? Which way should I go? How should I get there? And Saturn is really kind of not supporting the curiosity. He's kind of, I'm going to say, holding his ground and realizing that we really have to accept the terms that some options, some paths, some directions are no longer being offered to us due to the solstice energy removing those particular timelines and soul contracts from us being able to actually advance our way in them. There has been a major shift. Timelines have collapsed. We cannot go back to some of the things that we fought very hard to get away of. And we shouldn't want to at this particular juncture. This is a tough interaction because emotionally speaking, it kind of brings us out of our headspace that the moon in Gemini has us in. In order to feel our way through the endings and the closures that are taking place, to come to a certain term of acceptance with those particular fallouts and fall aparts in order for us to realize where we have to clean the space, clean the slate and start building towards something new. And a lot of this because of the Pisces energy that Saturn is retrograde in has to do with the spiritual tough love life lessons that we have yet to process. We haven't accepted yet. We really haven't understood that, you know, shit hit the fan and now we're pivoting into a new path in a new direction. That Pisces energy is our belief system, our dreams, our goals, our visions, and a lot of the things that have just fallen apart has totally put us in a different territory, a different space, because we weren't counting on having to make such a major pivot at this point in the calendar. So a little bit of a harsh reality check, a little bit of a sobering energy for us to realize what it is that we have to accept, what we have to move away from, and what we have to get kind of down to the nitty gritty as far as building a brand new foundation goes. 